Gracias, señora presidenta. Well, the intensity of our exchanges today, the intensity and extension of our exchanges today, because it has been uh, almost 100 interventions, covering the full spectrum, the full political spectrum of this house, shows uh, how important the situation is and underlines the gravity of the situation. I Gojurovtas is very much right. Apart from the far right and the far left, it has been a remarkable unity among the members of the parliament, which represents more or less the same unity between member states, with nuance, certainly, but with a strong unity among us. And the issue, and Guy has already said that, is that Ukraine is not a military threat to Russia. But this is a, a political threat, because if uh, Ukraine builds a vibrant democracy and goes on to a prosperous economy, then it will be an example. And in Russia's Putin, after 20 years of his government, the economics is in bad shape, and the system is more and more autocratic or authoritarian. Even today, we can see that uh, the opposition politician Navalny inside the penal colony is uh, starting another trial against him, regrettably without any possibility of observation. So, Ukraine continues advancing on their reforms, building a democracy, and building a prosperous economy. This is something that uh, Russia's Putin can certainly not uh, look with good eyes. But the Ukrainians have made certainly their choice, and I think that most of them, they prefer to live under democracy, rule of law, and a free market economy, than uh, look into what's happening in Russia. And this is the real issue. The real issue is how can we support Ukraine on this path to democracy and economic prosperity. Impossible to answer, or even to refer to all the questions that you have been raising today. I just want to, to answer in particular uh, Hilda Baumanns when she was asking me directly, can I ensure you that uh, has, this unity has not been jeopardized by the initiative taken by some member states? Certainly, can I ensure. Certainly. Plusieurs membres de l'Union européenne, en particulier la France, et je l'ai dit en français, en particulier le président Macron, mais aussi l'Allemagne, ont pris des initiatives politiques pour essayer de favoriser un règlement pacifique de la crise. Mais toutes ces initiatives ont été menées en cohérence avec les positions de l'Union et dans des conditions de grande transparence. On a été informé avant et après de ces initiatives. Et je pense qu'autour de l'Ukraine, il s'est bâti un climat de confiance entre les États membres à propos de la crise. Et je pense que c'est la meilleure façon de répondre à l'agression russe. Donc soyez tranquilles, mesdames et messieurs les députés. Les initiatives qui ont été prises ici et là par plusieurs États membres n'ont pas affaibli l'unité européenne, au contraire, ils nous ont permis d'être plus actifs et participants dans euh, les démarches diplomatiques qui ont eu lieu. Uh, someone, some other members have been asking, but uh, you have been discussing, negotiating with Russia, it has been any kind of concessions? Certainly not. First, we haven't been negotiating with Russia. So if there is no negotiation, there is no concessions. We have just answering letters in a very much united way. And certainly my political director held with its Russian counterpart in January, talks about the European situation in general, and they discuss about the political situation around the Ukrainian crisis. 
but I cannot consider that negotiation, so don't bother, don't be worried about possible concession from one side or the other. Many issues about the diversification of energy supply, but I think that uh, to that, uh, the President of the Commission has given a very complete answer on all the work that she personally and my colleagues, commissioners, and myself, we have been doing with other suppliers of gas, Norway, Algeria, Azerbaijan, US, talking with also um, countries in the Pacific who can reroute some supplies of gas. And this lot of work presents us the advantage of being ready and able to face a crisis on the energy side. What I want to stress is that in the face of the Russian military threat, we believe that still a diplomatic way out of the crisis that Russia has caused is still possible. And this is our top priority, and that's what we are investing in all our efforts. Let me stress that. We still believe that the diplomatic out of the crisis is possible. But in parallel, we have accelerated the work on restrictive measures. That's why the treaty calls what we use sanctions. The word sanctions is not in the treaty, just restrictive measures, including sectoral financial and individual sanctions that would be adopted in close coordination with like-minded countries in Europe and across the Atlantic in case of a military aggression. Be sure of that. And be sure also that um, even if Moscow deliberately has been bypassing Europe in security discussions, because President Putin profoundly disagrees with the values that we, European Union, practice and defense, and this is the real problem, they disagree with our values, with our way of living, with the European way of living, what, what do we represent of combination of political freedom, economic prosperity, and social cohesion? And this is, since the beginning of the crisis, why we have been expressing our principal positions about the main parameters that have defined the European security architecture for the last 30 years from now. But we have to think about what Russia is looking for. Qu'est-ce qu'elle veut, la Russie? What, do, what Russia wants on creating this crisis. And I think that uh, they have several objectives. The first one is to return at the heart of the world game. To be recognized as an equal player with the, US, with the US at a time when the US is turning towards Asia, to be again reconsidered as a global player. And I have to say that from this point of view, Putin has got some success because now everybody is talking with him. He has played in the center of the political game. The second, the second purpose linked to the first is also intended to test the possibility of a decoupling between the United States and Europe, particularly after the American withdrawal from Afghanistan. And in this respect, they should be quite disappointed because our unity has been increased, not weakened. And finally, he seeks to reconstitute the former Soviet sphere by raising the fears about NATO enlargement. And that's true, that the question of NATO enlargement plays an important role on the Russian psychology in this relation to the West. But to try to reduce everything in this crisis to the question of NATO enlargement, or to think that uh, once a possible guarantee of a uh, Ukraine's membership or non-membership to NATO could be obtained to believe that this would solve everything and we will go back to normal, it's illusory. It's illusory. Simply 
Because when you look at what is happening in Belarus, which no one has ever said that Belarus could join the European Union or NATO, we are witnessing a real Russia a stronghold on the country since Lukashenko was in trouble and playing for his survival at the price of the integration and even absorption into a greater Russia. So, no, don't reduce that to the NATO expansion. The big problem is the fight between two different political and economic systems. What do we represent? Our values and their values, our way of living and their way of living. This is the real fight. It's not a fight between armies. It's a fight about ideas, which uh, sometimes is much more important. Until now, nothing is played, nothing is won, but uh, we have to keep vigilant. What we must avoid, basically, is a reedition of the Crimea scheme, where we were quite surprised by the invasion, reacted with sanctions, but nothing more. Now, we must show that any invasion of Ukraine is in any form, whatever it takes, in any form it takes, be it the annexion of Donbass or isolated military incursion into the rest of Ukraine, would be prohibitively expensive for Russia. For Russia and for its oligarchs. So the package of sanctions that we are working, that we have already ready to implement, has to be strong and credible. But at the same time, we must not close the door to a discussion, even when discussing, we must apply the rules of social distancing. Must therefore combine firmness and determination with a willingness to engage in a dialogue as soon as Russia agrees to play the game of negotiation and to move away from the logic of ultimatum and military intimidation that has been practicing for several months now. Mr. Lavrov has just declared that, that he is ready to continue discussions. So let's do it. Let's discuss seriously, but without lowering our guard. I hope this debate will have marked this path. Thank you to all of you. Oikein paljon kiitoksia, arvoisa korkea edustaja, tästä loppupuheenvuorosta. Ja kuten sanotte, keskustelu on ollut intensiivinen ja tärkeä. No, keskusteluja jatketaan kello 15.00 ajankohtaisella keskustelulla, joka perustuu työjärjestyksen 162 artiklaan ja aiheena on silloin yksi nuoriso, yksi Eurooppa. Toivotan teille hyvää lounastaukoa. <tos>